and I know the subject is open for discussion. Anybody wants to join and talk about it? Now, I just I just kept through be call, being called uh, uh, some pretty bad names by other Christians a few minutes ago about this subject, which I thought was terribly unfortunate that somebody's going to be an accuser of the brethren. Because, uh, because of their view about this. Because, like I say, um, everybody would agree that God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Or rather, that Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are God. Right? So, if you believe that, and somebody else believes that, how are they a heretic? See, that's a question. It's a question that people who are going to accuse you of being a heretic, if you don't use the same language, won't answer. What makes someone a heretic? Where is it? Where's the heresy? Right? So if somebody who says God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are three persons, and somebody says God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are one person, well, they're acknowledging that God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God has made himself known to us as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The same way that the person the other guy did, the other person, pun intended, says God is three persons. <clears throat> we believe the same thing there, right? The difference is the guy on the left demands that you use the word person to describe the Trinity, and the one on the right does not. See, that's the contention point. But then, when you ask them to explain what do you mean by person, they obfuscate, they refuse to answer. They won't say. They won't tell you what they mean by person. The word person is from presopon in Greek. It means a countenance or a face around the eyes, the area around the eyes. It was used by the ancient Greeks to describe the face, the mask, that a player in a play would put up to express the idea that now that's a different person. That's what the word means. It's only used uh, twice in the whole Bible, in the whole New Testament, talking about God. But it doesn't tell us God is three persons. It just says the person of God. Jesus is the person that, of the Father. It really says that. It says that he is the expressed image, press upon, of the Father. Well, wait a minute. I thought God was three persons. Doesn't that passage say Jesus is the same person as the Father? See, it gets really murky. The, the, the biggest problem I find is that people who demand the use of the word person in relation to the Trinity declare anybody who won't use it to be a heretic, and they call them terrible names, and they become accusers of the brethren. And to me, that's wrong. That's really wrong. Sounds kind of muffled. Let me change headsets. Okay. Now well, maybe that's better. Is that any better? How's my audio now? Is it any better? Hmm. Better? Great, thanks. Okay, so as I pointed out, it hinges around the use of the word person 
Okay, somebody's joined. Hey, God bless you, Nephilim. Hey, Nephilim, Robert. it's been a while, man. Hopefully everything's been going great with you. Yeah, how are you, man? I'm blessed. I'm sure that you are, too. Good. But yeah, um, Nephilim free, man. Um, yeah, you're you're in a droid. Hopefully I'm pronouncing this word right. You're in a... It, it, the word I'm, I'm trying to pronounce is A-D... R O I T. You're an adroit apologist. Like you're, you're, you're a pretty skillful apologist, and um, it kind of disappointed me when I heard that you're not a trinitarian, man. Well, am I not? Let, let's see if that's true. Oh, okay, God. Okay. So like, let's see if that's true. Hold on. So, uh, God has made Himself known to us as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Would you agree? Yeah, God. God is made up of three di distinct members: the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yep. Now, when you say made up. So you, know, you you sound like three entities. I just asked a basic question is all. I'm just asking, is it not true, is it true or not true, that God has made himself known to us as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Is that true or not true? Oh, yeah, the trial God. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, sorry about that if that's I uh, confused you with the made-up okay. part. When I, when I said made-up, I mean of, like, comprised. Right, that's the same thing. So uh, we both agree, then, that the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are all three God. Is that not true? Or all three, one God, yeah. One God, that's right. Okay, so what, what, what is it that I don't believe about the Trinity? How am I not a Trinitarian? Oh, because don't you believe the Father and the Son are the same? Did Jesus say, I and the Father are one? Yeah, but when he said that, he means as a unity. He's not saying that they're the same Oh, wait, character. so you're going to add philosophy to the passage instead of accept what Jesus said on face value. I'm not asking. I'm not. No, I'm just saying. I'm just telling you what he said. He's not saying that. They're well, the same no, character. what he said is I am the father of one. He didn't say all this philosophical stuff you want. Yeah, to. yeah, that's what I'm saying. When he, when he said that, he's saying that they're both a unity. He's not saying that the same. Well, he didn't say that. He didn't say any of that. He just said R1. My yeah, yeah, and my that's father what I'm saying. When he says they are both one, so he's you, saying that they're both unity. You're adding your ideas to it. I'm not adding any say that. I'm telling you. Okay. Show me the words uh, one unit in the, in the passage. Where? Wait, what did you ask? I'm sorry about that, Nifflin. Right. So where where did Jesus say one unit? No, no, I'm saying unity. Where where do you say we are in unity? Oh, when he says we are one, that's what that means, unity. Well, now that's your idea as to what it means. That's not my idea. That, okay, that's so what, that's what if, I, if I say... <laughs> <laughs> wait, look, dude. If I say the automobile and the truck are one... I'm saying the automobile and the truck are the same thing, am I not? They're the same. The vehicle is the automobile, is the truck. The vehicle is a truck. It is the automobile. They are one, 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 one vehicle, right? Yeah, but that so, that phrase. Right? Can, well, that's okay, what Jesus that said. Can, I and the Father are one. Yeah, that phrase. Okay. We are one can 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 be used to refer to different things. It can be used to say we're un a unity, like I said. But he doesn't do that. that. It's that not they're, used um, in one, passage, one in this, right? Like they're the same. But it's not used that way in the passage. Where, where is, does he it say? Uses a unity. Then why didn't he say any of that? Be, be, that that is him saying that uh, we are one. No, that's he's not. You, those words. One. Let's understand. Those words that you're using are not in the passage. We are okay. one can mean unity. Okay. You know right. that, right? That's okay. what, the, and that's what he's that's what he's meaning by that in that passage. It it, it, it can right. So, but and that's what he's meaning question. by that in that passage. Slow down a little. Back to the patent question. <laughs> you believe that God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and these are all three one God, right? Yeah, yeah. They're okay, unity. Right. Yep, they're one. All right, great. All right. So I believe that very same thing. So how am I not a Trinitarian? Again, because you, again, we've, we've already been through this because you believe that the Father no, see, is the same person. Here's not the, the thing. Same person. You're not able to tell me how I'm not a Trinitarian. Yes, I, Except I to say, you, wait, no, wait, 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 slow down. You're not able to tell me how I'm not a Trinitarian, except to say that I don't use the word person. No, to it's because them. you believe that's that the, the Father and thing. the Son are the same person, and they're not the same. Per that's not the, what Trinitarians believe. That's not the concept. That's what how makes you they... a Trinitarian. Trinitarian. Right. So, what what does person mean? What do you mean by they're different persons? Tell us, please. Persons. When we mean persons, it's not saying that they're different, complete, like 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 a human being, like different persons. We're saying that they're like. Like persons in a party, like like different members in a party. You know what I mean? Okay, so does one person have a separate sovereign spirit entity than another? Or you and I, you and I have, we are not the same person, correct? And the reason for that is not really so much that we have different flesh, but because your spirit is separate and, and 
from mine. We are not the same spirit. You have your entity life force, the breath of God that God gave you. I have my spirit life force entity breath of life that God gave me. Your spirit is not my spirit. We are two sovereign separate spirits. Would you agree with that? Uh, yes, I agree. But um, Okay. Is God three spirits question. or one spirit entity being? Wait, 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 repeat that one more time. I'm sorry. Is God three spirit, sovereign, separate spirit beings, or is he one sovereign, separate spirit being? Yeah, yeah, God, God has uh, one spirit. He's one, one entity, one spirit, one life force, right? Yes, and okay. yeah, one life force that okay. is made up of three uh, distinct um mm -hmm. Three made distinct members of? that have that same life Wait, force. what do you mean made up of? If he's one, how is he made of three? Uh, because there's three that um that sh that have the same position, like they have that position. They share the same position of authority. So it's three that 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 are God that have that have the occupation. Three, three what? Yeah, three. so th three members that that share the same uh position of authority. Members? But they're all the three same spirit entity, right? Uh, yes. Okay. So how are they different persons if they're the same spirit entity? Because they're um, because they're not the same. They're, they're outside of one another. Like like the father isn't the son. They're they're not the same character. They have the same spirit, but they're not the same character. They're not the same member. They're not the same um manifestation or expression of himself. They're not the same. Um, they're not the same body. They don't have the same body. Well, God doesn't have a body. Jesus had one. The Father. Yeah, has yeah. No Jesus body. has the body. Neither has the spirit. But you're not telling me. Uh, you know how are they different spirit uh, persons? Oh, because um, yeah, they're they're different persons because they're outside of one another. They're not, they're not the, like they're not the Father isn't the Son. They're, they don't have the same. Um, yeah, the Father has the body and Jesus doesn't. So, like, yeah, that, that shows how they're different. Like, they don't have... Yeah, but that doesn't tell me how they're different persons. Let me share this passage with you, okay? So, Hebrews 1, 1. God, who in sundry times and diverse manners spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom he also made the worlds who being in the brightness of his glory and the expressed image of his person, oh, wait a minute. Jesus is the person of the Father. Now, you're saying they're separate persons. Why does Scripture say the Jesus double. is the person? <laughs> Why does Scripture say Jesus is the person of the Father, but you say they are different persons? Yeah, right yeah me here? saying I'm the, the the he's the person of the father doesn't mean that they're, that they're the same person. Wait, person the word there is press upon, okay. And what it means is it means countenance or appearance or face or the area around the eyes. This is what the word press upon means in Greek, and it's used to express in in the Greek writings the idea, the understanding that a actor in a Greek play would put on one mask, and when he did, the audience recognized that's a different human being speaking. Now, he's representing, he's a different character. He's representing a different person, a different being, right? That's what the Greek word press upon means. means countenance or face, okay? This passage tells us that Jesus is the person of the Father. Let me read it again, okay? Are you there now? Yeah. Okay. All right. Do you have the um? Do you have the verse displayed on screen? I'm about to pull it up. Oh, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Here it. Here it is. It's Hebrews one one. It says, "Who being in the brightness of his glory and the expressed image of his person." So Jesus is the brightness of his glory and the expressed image of God's countenance. Okay, so, so Jesus is the countenance of God on the earth in human flesh, is what it says. Nephilim. Okay, so what this verse is saying, what this verse I just is told teaching. You what it says. Okay, okay, so look, what this verse is teaching <laughs> is that 
the, that Jesus and the Father same the share the same divine nature. That, that that that's what that's what this but, is teaching. But you agree they're the one one being, one entity, one spirit, one life. Yeah, and that's what I was, I was trying to get across to you, Neff, in the chat. Is is they share the same being? Like they don't. They're what distinguishes them is their hypostatic prop properties, and that's what it is in <laughs> Hebrews one three. It's hypostasis. He is the person of the Father. Mm -hmm. That is Trinitarian theology. He is the person of the Father. Right. I agree. But he's not the Father, though. That's true. But then you just acknowledge one person. No, the there's same person. You just no, did. He, he represents the father so like in let's say right. the person upon the press upon of the father right. the hypostasis so it's where we get hypostasis from right so you, you just acknowledge that jesus is the same person as the father no you did and you don't realize it no he they co indwell I'll each other there. no, no that's you not did true. and now you're going to use philosophy to try to justify that you didn't no i'm not I'm, I'm using the word in the hebrews did. 1 3 hypostasis it's not prophesied it, it, it says it, hebrews 1 3 explicitly says that he is the image the the person of of god so yeah he is the hypostasis of the father no it's standing for truth i don't compromise anything the, the problem here uh donnie is this some people Christians demand the use of the word person to describe the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And they'll declare you a heretic if you don't use it. The philosophies of men from the fourth and fifth centuries. That's 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 the that's let the, me the, ask you something, no, no. Wait, 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 let me let me address this. So that's the idea. I believe the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are one being, one God, one entity. Okay. You believe the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are one God, one entity, right? Yeah. Okay. So let me so ask you tell something. Me, so, so wait, I'm addressing Donnie in the tag, uh, praise. Please. Okay. Thank you for me. Okay. So how is it that I'm not a Trinitarian, which people like yourself often say? You're not a Trinitarian if you don't use the word person is what they're doing. They're arguing. How, if I believe that God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and those three are one God, how is it that I don't believe in the Trinity? See, that's a question we ask people who demand the use of the word person to describe. Because you're denying the eternal sonship of and Christ. They never, and they never answer it. Never. I've, I've Listen, I've asked dozens of Christians this subject, this question over the last four years. I have never had one answer that question. Never. They always obfuscate. They avoid that question. They go off continuing the claim. You're a heretic. You don't believe the We Trinity. just answered you, Nev. You deny the eternal sonship of Christ. Eternal sonship. All right. So now we're getting to it. All right. Somebody is admitting the issue here. Okay. So you're believing that the Father, that God, before he created the world, he existed as three persons. He was Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So here's my question to you. Before God created the universe, with, and before he created the angels, before he created humankind, there is no one that he needs a savior. Is that true? That's true. So who is God to save? Why does he make himself Christ if there's no one that needs a savior? He's his foreknowledge. He's, he's always been savior from his foreknowledge. Of what? Of of the creation that he's, he's he has eternal foreknowledge of that. Yeah, I would say God becomes savior when there's something to save. You would say he's always been savior. But don't you but think God nothing. knew it beforehand, though? Sure, but you're saying he's savior of nothing. I'm not. I'm saying he's savior of someone. It's well. It clearly says that Jesus was the the lamb slain before the world was. Did you know that Revelation one one says that Jesus Christ is the Almighty, and that he, he is that uh and that he is the alpha and omega right but you're trying to separate them see scripture says they're one being yeah you're talk right but you're using language and demanding other language of other people that describes him as whether you accept it whether you acknowledge it or not as three beings yeah i understand you're going to say well, three that, beings that, that, that we don't one say being. that i yeah, understand that I understand you say that they're one being and that's what you believe. I understand that. But when you demand that the use of the word person, you're describing God as three beings, whether you like it or not. 
Well, no, but it's, it's your misunderstanding of person. Do you think God is divisible? I, I mean, do you think, let me ask you this. Do you think the Trinitarians believe no. God is divisible? No, I don't. It's you who thinks he is divided. No, we, we don't. We don't believe that he's divisible. He, he's well, then, indivisible. There's no spatial okay. distinction. Okay, then the, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are one being. Yeah. Excellent. You're Trinitarian. You're not. You're Sorry, Trinitarian, I believe, then. I, I, so if I believe that the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are one being, and God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, am I not a Trinitarian? Yeah, that's Trinitarian theology. Okay. Okay, so don't say I'm not a Trinitarian if I don't use the word person. Can you get that in your head? Well, they're divine okay, persons, no, you though, now. And every other Christian out there that accuses somebody who doesn't use the word person to describe the Trinity, calls people heretics and becomes accusers of the brethren, they'll go so far as to say you're a Satanist because you don't use the word person. And you just got through acknowledging I'm a Trinitarian. So from now on, well, you're Chris, speaking Trinitarian. you and your kind don't declare Christians who don't use the word person to be a heretic and well, become accusers of the brethren like what happened to me on Donnie's channel 20 minutes ago. Well, let me ask you a question that shows if you're Trinitarian How about that? or not. If I, if I'm, if I'm, you acknowledge Is I'm the son eternal or not? Why, is the son eternal why, or not? Why call me a heretic if I believe that Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are one being? Because you use confusing you. terminology. So is the, no, no, is, no, the, I, is the son eternal, yes or no? No, no. so you, you think that so he's, he's not terminology the son. makes somebody a non-Trinitarian? Is the son is eternal it? or not? And I have to censor the question. Is that, he's eternal because he's God. Yeah, so God the father and the son are eternal. So you at least no, know there's two that are eternal. Right. That's that's where we differ, you see. I believe that God has always been one being. You think that God has been Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That's still one that's being. His, they share the same being. being. His one his natural state is to be Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Are we human beings, Neff? We are that's, human that's and we have beings that everything that that humans share. That's that's the, what it really boils down to. The people who fell for the third and fourth century pagan philosophies about God, who declared him to be three persons, described him as though he were three beings, and the Bible doesn't do that's it. That's tritheism. That's, that's not that's, Trinitarian that's, of, uh, Christianity. I, I agree, but that's what you're demanding of other people to no, do. No, we're not. We're just asking you to, to, to identify him as three divine persons, not human persons, human no. heads. We don't think God is three no. human heads. Donnie, don't be I'm an accuser of the brethren. Have I not told you that I believe God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? They are one being, right? That is what you believe. Is that not the Trinity? Right. The difference here is that people believe that Jesus, God, has, had been divided into three minds, and that's the way he's always been. No. He has three minds. Yeah, that's not what we believe. You know, the Father says, you know, no, what, do you want for, what do you want for lunch today, son? And the son says to the Holy Spirit, I don't know. Holy Spirit, what do you think? What, what One mind, three consciousness. Let, let me finish. Where should we go for lunch, Dad? This is your mind, your, your idea, not mine. And it's not the Bible's idea. God, God is not three minds. God's word instructs the, the Trinity. Okay. God but again, one, so one if the being. Son is eternal, the Holy Spirit's eternal. That is, that's the Trinity. You just you, admitted it. You've said that they're one Spirit. You yes. acknowledged it. Okay. They all share one Spirit, share, but there are right. three distinct members that share? share one Spirit. Share. What do you mean share? When you say share, you're talking about a separate sovereign entity that's also a, a partaking of something with another one. That's We're talking the, centers of consciousness. That's, that's the erroneous language that you're using. There's three centers of consciousness. And that's the problem, is that people who do demand the use of the word person and declare that God has had three minds, that's his natural state, is to be... No, three, one three mind, minds. three consciousnesses. Well, wait, three minds? One mind or three? One because mind, one three, three consciousness. consciousness. Three consciousness. That's three yeah, minds. That's not. No. You don't what, even know what you're saying. No, we have subcategories of consciousness. <laughs> we have first person, third person, second person in our consciousness. It's, so, it's so, even in our own, in so our own minds. So now you're adding uh, other Greek philosophy. It's like Greek. It's psychology. The Trinity. The Trinity. It's science. You're saying, you're saying God has three minds. No, three consciousnesses. He's one three mind. Consciousness. Three consciousnesses. That's three yes. minds. No, a mind, a mind is a conscious thing. No, it's not. They're they're okay, they're just so that's, that's false philosophy. No, it's not. Hold, 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 it's, if, if your mind is not conscious, then it's not a mind. 
right? Nephilim, it, please, it's please, absurd. Wait, wait, Nephilim, please give give him some time where he can explain to you what he means by three consciences. Let him expound on that. No, the use of the word is self contradictory. To say a mind no, okay, well, can be non conscious. To say to mind, to say a mind cannot be conscious or separate from consciousness. Or, or communication. Not a mind. There's three divine <laughs> communications. That's, that's all that absurd, there is. That's an absurd idea. Oh, it's so absurd now, for two different communications within okay. God to speak. What about Hebrews one well, eight? Right now, so so now when I demonstrate the error in you and the idea that consciousness and mind can be considered separate, you you go off into something else. You try to describe. You just I'm, I'm I'm pushing back what you just said. I'm, you said that there's impossible for consciousnesses to to communicate to be separate from mind. No, I didn't say what you said. I said it's it's irrational to separate consciousness from mind. They're not something separated. Is, they're distinct. Okay. You don't. They're right. just, so you, yeah, they're, they're distinct. Separate. They're one. Yeah, they're one, but distinct. One mind. Sure. Yeah. God is not three minds. No, he's That's one right. mind, three consciousnesses, Excellent. and and they're distinct. Then he's not three persons either. Yeah, that makes three persons because yeah. three consciousness centers of consciousness no, show consciousness that there's an independence within each person. Minds are consciousness. Consciousness is mind. They're not if, separate. If they're just that, distinct. That's false philosophy. No, it's no, not. No, you can't separate consciousness. The mind of the Holy Spirit. God seeks the mind of the Holy Spirit. So you're yeah, going to have to. You're going to have to address that. You can't Nephilim, separate let, let mind from consciousness. You on how they're distinguished, the three consciences, please. You, you can't separate mind from consciousness. You uh, you believe God. We're not saying they're minds. separated. We're saying they're distinct. They're right. indivisible. I, I believe the Father is distinct from the Son, for sure. Good. The distinction is flesh. And no, is, no, and, no. It's, and, it's, and, it's, excuse it's me, relational. It's, the, the distinction is flesh. And and what he is to do? You're not the trinitarian, then. You're not trinitarian. It. You're 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 modalist. You're you're a no, no, uh, no, monarchian no, no, modalist. No, no, not a modalist. Let Let's understand something. This is an error that that people like yourself constantly make. You accuse anybody who doesn't believe this philosophy you've swallowed as a as a modalist. Let's understand something. Modalism is the idea that God stops being one while he's the other. In other words, while God is the Son, He is no. The it's, he can be all no, three. No, mass. No, 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 stop. God Hold is on. one doing. I'm, I'm, no, I'm going to correct you. Then I'll unmute you. The historical definition of modalism is this: God stops being the Father while He's the Son. He stops being the Holy Spirit while He's the Father. While He stops. No, that's not the Trinitarian the theology. That is the historical definition of modalism. Some people have tried to change it in the last few centuries to try to, so that they can use it as a weapon against other Christians. The that's monarchianism. Up, they teach that now. Up, if you look up the definition of modalism, you'll find in philosophy in books of, of the, theological philosophy books like the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy. Modalism is the understanding that God stops being the Father while He's the Son, stops being the Son while He's the Holy Spirit. You're monarchian. Who cares? So, you call them offices oh, or duties, you, whatever you, you want to call them. It's you monarchianism. Make you make a mistake in calling me a modalist. Okay, that's not. You're monarchian. It's, it's a fake. You're still oneness. You're still oneness. Okay. That's a fake accusation. Sure. Okay. Make. So we were wrong about modalism, but you're still monarchy okay, and right. oneness. So I, I corrected you about modalism. Not a modal. A lot of people make that. Sure. Error. No, they that's think, fine. They think I'll if take you that don't back. Use the word person, then instantly you're accused of being a. Modal. You're still oneness, right. though, Neff. You still think <laughs> God is one person? That's monarchy and yes, oneness. Yes. Exactly. Yes, I do. Yeah, you're not that's, Trinitarian. Well, that's what Scripture teaches, that Jesus Christ said, I and the Father are one. Did there's you know? three that bear witness in heaven. Are you denying there's three? I thought okay. you said he's one. No, I didn't say that they're not three. I say he's one mind, one spirit, one entity, one being, one person. He well, how are they three? three? How, how do you get the three then? The three is God the Father is the lawmaker. God the Son is Savior. And, 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 the, and the Holy Spirit is comforter. And, and, and counselor and counselor and teacher yes but there's three that bear witness in heaven though right but they're all three the same being right we say the same thing but you're not you're not trinitarian though sure they all three exist in heaven because they're all three in one being you mean like, you mean right. offices or duties like see this is where yeah. you need to make a distinction if they're not persons what are they then right they're not persons they're one one person god is one person well then there's not three it's one no one person 
three manifestations of himself. Manifestations. Okay, yeah. Right. So, yeah, you are your you're, you're typical, the uh, oneness Pentecostal. When oneness oh. Pentecostals teach that. Does the, does the Bible say God was is not manifest for us? Yeah, First Timothy 3.16, yeah. All right, then. Yes, let's read that. And without controversy, great is the mystery of Godliness. God was made visible in human flesh. In flesh. God was made visible in flesh. Okay? Not God's, not person's God, just God, was made visible in human flesh. I thought you said the Son was eternal, though, Nev. Why are you changing your mind now? He is eternal because God is eternal. He's God. He's the same being. Of course he's eternal. So the son or the father is eternal. You need to make that distinction. Yes. All three are eternal because they're the the same God. When the Bible speaks of the son, he speaks of God. You're double speaking enough, man. Like I wish I wish you'd be more specific. When the Bible when the when the Bible describes I'm on your side, brother, but you gotta listen. When when the Bible describes the Son, it's describing God made visible in human flesh. He came in the flesh. He was always the eternal son before he came in the flesh. Why is he eternal? Remember in John 3, 16, what does it say? It says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And he's God. He's eternal because he's God. Is that not true? He's eternal because he's God. He was there from the beginning. He was there from the beginning. Right, God, God was there from the that, beginning. That that in that state, the listen, let me God. let me give you an argument from. Um, is, wait, is it not true? Hold on. Is I'm going to give you the argument for the Trinity from love, if you, if, if so you understand God, the issue. If he wasn't God, he wouldn't be eternal. Isn't that true? The reason he's eternal is because he is God. Is that not correct? Of course. God listen, the Son, not, not God the Father. We're not conflating the Father with the Son. Remember, okay, so when Jesus left before his ascension, what did he say? He said that I must go to the Father now yeah. so that I can send the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit will remain with you forever, right? Well, if the Holy Spirit can remain with us forever, then doesn't that mean he doesn't need to come back under your understanding of things? No. He's Revelation already with us according to that understanding. No, Revelation one one says uh, unequivocally that Jesus Christ is, is the Almighty. The Alpha and the Omega. And the Alpha and yes, the beginning of the end. Hey, He's me, the one that was a, that sacrificed himself. Let me finish yes. a sentence. Let me finish my own sentences, not you. Okay. So it states Revelation one one says that Christ is the Almighty and the beginning and the end, the Alpha and Omega, the Almighty. Right. Right. Okay. So he doesn't say he's a different person. Says he is the same being. I am that one. Well, he's also one. sitting at the right hand of the Father. Do you understand that those are two distinct positions? Right. And okay, so does the Father have a physical body? It doesn't the matter. The whole the whole no, point no, of no, saying no, is that. making a distinction between persons. That's it, it why it's mentioned. It's making a distinction. I don't say persons. Here's the thing. God the Father I doesn't have I, a flesh. Or, listen, hey, 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 hold on. Slow down. It's just God a the Father doesn't That's have a what throne. Talking about. God, God the Father doesn't have a physical throne or, or, I, or a body, right? Okay, so when it says that he that. ascended to the right hand of the Father, that's an ideological, theological statement. It's not a physical, material one, right? God, Regardless, Jesus the analogy isn't stands sitting, firm. As a distinction you, between two distinct individual persons, the persons, that though, Jesus, inhabit the characteristics agree, of God. Don't you agree that Jesus is not sitting on a physical throne somewhere in a body, and the Father is sitting on his physical throne? In okay, a body? so when Stephen, yeah, no, hold on, when let Stephen, me, no, 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 let when me ask Stephen my was martyred, when let Stephen was martyred, what did he say? Interrupting. Let me ask what my did question. Stephen say? No, don't shut down my question. Let me ask it without you interrupting. Okay, you don't believe that the Father, that Jesus, is sitting on a physical throne in the flesh. The Father is sitting on a physical throne in the flesh, and the Holy Spirit has His own flesh and own His physical throne. You don't it believe does that not nonsense, have to right? be a physical throne, right? Okay, I'm right. asking. Okay, exactly. listen. When Stephen, when so Stephen brought so the whole point of that analogy, I'm not quite done. I'm not quite done. Let him finish. I'm not quite done. No, I'm almost done. So the point is, then, this is a theological statement, not a material one. Do you agree? It doesn't have to be material. What's the point of you even bringing that up? Right. You know that the material is a representation of what's going on in the spirit. You understand that, right? 
You don't need physical matter to exist for these things to actually exist. It's a it's a spiritual thing to begin with. Exactly. Right. So God why are we even contesting this? God is one spirit, right? He is one spirit. Okay. He is one spirit entity. That's correct. Because if you were two, we would be polytheists. We're not. Right? Listen, we're nobody here is. Right? is okay, listen. None of us are thinking that enough. Right. Listen, That's you are right. giving a straw man definition for the Trinity. That's the problem. No. Uh, yes, no, because I'm, the word Trinity I'm, means I'm not tri the Trinity. unity, triunion. I'm just pointing out that it's wrong to declare that if somebody doesn't use the word person to describe the Trinity and you turn around and call them a heretic or a devil or something and accuse the brethren of something because they don't, they believe, although they still believe also, just like you, that God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and those three are one being, one God, then to turn around because they don't swallow your philosophy about God being three persons and declare and use the word person to turn around and become an accuser of the brethren and accuse them of well, being no, a heretic and call them a devil the dumb, is the, wrong and God is not pleased with that. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay the, the I completely comments, agree with you that no one should be trying to throw you out as a heretic. I'm not trying to do that, but I want you to understand that the reason why we have this doctrine is because of the distinctions that are made in scripture. We have multiple places where the Holy Spirit specifically he can be grieved. He has many different things that are different about him that you cannot find with the Father or the Son. In fact, it, to, to blaspheme the Holy Spirit is the unforgivable sin, whereas you could do that with the Father or with Jesus. You see that there's an issue if you hold your particular view, right, that that would not work. Uh, no, no, I, I don't see what you see. You, you, you see things so when, that I just when don't it, see. When Jesus said that, that uh, blasphemy of the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven of anyone, not in this life or the next. Okay, who's blaspheming the Holy Spirit? This is when he was, he was speaking to the Pharisees. Okay, and they were remember they he had just performed some miracles, and they claimed that uh, the miracles performed were done by Beelzebub, the spirit of the, you know, um, I mean, there's different ways of interpreting that, but basically, it's like the son of the devil, basically. But um, regardless of that, the, the whole point he was making is that people that are going to make the claims that the works that he's doing are from that spirit or blaspheming the Holy Spirit. I don't think that anybody is actually capable of doing that in this current situation that we're in right now. But at that time, in that day, when Jesus was walking the earth, it was possible. That being said, if it's possible that somebody can be cursed eternally just because they didn't believe that those miracles were done by the Holy Spirit, as opposed to what Jesus was doing, all the blasphemy that was done against him will be forgiven. Isn't that interesting that he's being identified distinctly from that of the Holy Spirit? Yeah, so who argues that God has not provided distinctions? I have a I serious question for them that needs to be distinctions uh, asked. Well, I, I don't know we're using a, an identifier so to show I, the distinctions. I, That's what we I, see. I, you, hold on. I said, I, I don't know anybody who denies that God has made distinctions, that the Father and Son and Holy Spirit had distinct or distinctions. Now, do you believe the Father is on the cross in a flesh suit, or did the I'm Son not. die on the cross? Just, let, just tell us right now. Don't even try to get around. Just answer the question, yes or no. Uh, God was on that cross, and God is all three. So which God who? God the one, Father and the Son and the Holy which, Spirit were on the cross? God, God, yes, all three are God. No, the Son died, but, not, but, the, not the Father but, the Holy Spirit. But wait. What spirit? Okay, now we're going to get into some of the. Uh, the you're going to really find some of the issues that that you have. Going the on. Father sent so the Son. Okay, not but, the Holy but, Spirit. Okay, but who was on the cross? Let's talk the about son. that for a second. Okay, so the second is, member of the Holy Trinity was on the cross. So here's one thing. So, what's my question then? Is what spirit was in the flesh of Jesus bound to that flesh? That was on the cross. Before you answer, let's consider this for a second. When God made Adam, he breathed the breath of life and get into Adam and he gave him spirit. His body was ready to go. All the ATP was in the cells ready to go. Mitochondria are clicking away. RNA was just to, just being trans polymerase, scoring down the DNA molecule, making RNAs. Everything is ready to go, right? And God gave him life and he became a living soul. 
right? He was not a living soul until life was put into him. Life is the breath of God, his spirit, right? So Adam was not living until he was given spirit by God, right? So what is a human? A human is a spirit created by God and a flesh bound together. When one dies, that sense, so, right? Yes. right? That, that is what a human being is. A spirit, not God's spirit, but another spirit separate, just like the angels are their own spirits. They are not God himself. You and I are different spirits from each other. We are also not God and we are not angels. We each have our own spirit, our own life force, right? So a human being is a spirit given by God and a flesh bound together on the earth. That's what a human being is, right? Right. So Jesus was a human being. And Jesus had a flesh. We know that he got that from his mother and the Y chromosome given by the father, right? And he also had a spirit. There was a spirit that lived in, animated in that. I don't flesh. think he had a Y chromosome. So, so here is the question. He had well, to, he had right, to be a male. He had to right, do that. So here's the question then. What spirit was it that was bound to that flesh that walked the earth as Jesus? What spirit was that? We don't say any spirit. We say that it's the nature. Jesus had the nature of God. No, no, no. He had to have spirit because spirit is life. There's no flesh. The there's Holy no Spirit was thing. in him. Hold on. Hold on. Praise. There's no such thing as a zombie, a walking, living flesh with no spirit in it. That's, that's TV stuff. There's no no unbelievers don't have the spirit. So a spirit is a, in a human. Humans have a spirit and a flesh. What spirit was it that was in that flesh of Jesus of Nazareth? What flesh? What spirit? He had his own spirit, a human he spirit. Had a spirit he had before human. the okay. Holy Spirit entered him. Did you hear what I said? Now, what you've just said, listen carefully to me, gentlemen, please. You just made yourself a heretic of heretics. You just said God has created a human being and punished him for the sins of other human beings, which God is. No, he said he has the nature of God. He it's cannot do. In the Old Testament, God says, I will not punish one for the sins of another. He says, I come to give to each according to their works in the Old Testament. Jesus Christ says it in Revelation. He says it in, in while he's walking the earth. The, the Apostle John, I think, quotes him on it. Was it Matthew? That he comes to give each according to their works. God will not punish one for the sin of another. That's immoral. Here's how, why, how it works. If a man comes before a human judge and the judge says, Sir, you've been found guilty by a peer of jury of your. This is Antichrist. For, no, you have stated Antichrist. Listen, you deny the son now. You're an Antichrist. It, and I'm going to prove it. Listen carefully. You have said. That, that man can come before a judge found guilty of stealing an automobile, but the judge can say, sir, I'm going to declare you innocent and punish that stringy haired fellow on the third bench in my courtroom reading a comic book. Bailiff, go bring that dude over here. We're going to throw his butt in jail and sir, you can go free. Can God do that? No. That's unjust. Not even a human judge can get away with that. Neither can God get away with that. What, what is, would God? Have to and he's already stated, hold on. He, God has already stated he will not do that because it is unjust. Now, you two people here just got through telling me that the spirit that lived in Jesus was a created one made by God and not God's spirit himself. And that I commend my that, spirit to you, Father. It says it in the that Bible. The Heresy. Heresy. I You're commend my you don't believe it's the God a, of the Bible. Of the Bible is, You're a heretic. I commend yeah. my spirit to you, Father. You what do you think that means? You don't believe the God of the Bible. You think Bro, God punished you. I'm not against you. you. And I actually you don't believe you're you insane. You're, you're not listening you now. You you're not even willing to accept one. correction. You said God punished one creature for the sin of another. Sharp and iron He's not a creature. He is uncreated. That's the reason why his sin debt was able to cover everyone. No, you said this. This According to the prophecies. Now, let he me explain to you the, the mistake you've made. Here's the mistake you've made. If there was a mortal created spirit in that flesh and not God himself who suffered on the cross for our sins, then God has allowed or caused or both. No one is one saying his, that. We're not saying a spirit died on the cross. One of, you one are. Of his creations, God, and God has had one of his creations suffer for the sin of other. Creations. You're saying a spirit died on the cross. That's retarded now. 
you said that the spirit that was in Jesus was a created one. And yes, he has a spirit. Created. That's heresy. He's a human being heresy. as a human spirit. That's impossible. He is God. What do you mean it's on, impossible? The Bible says it. Anything is possible. I'm, I'm, with no, I'm going to tell, 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 tell you how it's impossible. I'm going to tell you how it's impossible. Jesus is not a created spirit. Jesus is the spirit of God. Which he has a created spirit. If you're God, denying the, the. Jesus is the spirit of God, which took on human attributes like the ability to fear. And, and suffer emotionally. You are Gnostic, now. So he emptied himself. It says that Stop. He, and listen so and learn. You, here's, what, here's the problem. The, Christ is the spirit of God who took on human flesh. Not a created spirit. Not created. Human. God took on human attributes when he entered human flesh. God be, may, fashioned himself as a man, is what scripture says. Fashioned himself as a man. Fashioned himself as a man. I should read it again to you. Fashioned himself as a man. What do you think Jesus okay. is Ghostbusters or something? This is crazy God, enough. Do you even God, accept correction? God is, Jesus is not a created spirit. That's heresy. That is not Christianity. That's pagan religion. It's you who is not a Christian here, not me. No, Nephilim. We are the humanity of Christ. Jesus is you eternal. You're saying Jesus is a created being. The yes, spirit he was. On the cross. You're Jesus saying the spirit is that eternal on the cross. and always has been. So, okay, so praise no, the Father in the beginning. So, John so praise. Are you saying that a create? Let's get this clear on the table. You're saying that a spirit created by God, not God Himself, but one created by God, suffered. In our in place of us, we on never the cross, said that he right? was created by God. Is that right? Yeah, no, Jesus no. was a human being, but he also had the nature of God. It's called the hypostatic no, 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 union. No, the spirit, where the, when you're, you're running from the question. Spirit showed by on crosses, Neff. He wasn't a spirit. You, you already said the spirit that was in the, in the flesh of Jesus that lived it was the in Holy that Spirit God. that was inside of him. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's God. Yeah. Is God created? But he's not the Holy Spirit, though. Is God created? No. Okay. Then the spirit that lived in Jesus Christ is the spirit of God. Himself. Are you denying Jesus had a human spirit, though, Neff? Is that right? No, that's my question. I answer your I, question. I deny that Christ had a created human spirit. Yes. Oh, my you gosh. Mean, that is heresy. You're going to hell. To that, you're going to, to hell, now. To say that is blasphemy. You're going to hell, now if You don't repent of that. To say that is blasphemy. You guys, blasphemy. No, that is blasphemy. 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 You just got through telling us these human beings, God is a created human being that God punished for the sin of other created human beings. That's heresy. Wait, wait. You said that. Heresy. The Jesus Christ is God who made himself flesh and took on human attributes to suffer on the cross for our sin. That is Christianity. To say that the spirit that was in the flesh of Jesus was a mortal created one and not one, not God himself who took on mortal attributes when he entered human flesh is heresy. Heresy. You see, that's the difference. It needs to be reiterated so you understand your error. Jesus Christ is the spirit of God in a human flesh on the earth. It is God who took on human attributes like frailty and whatnot when he entered into his own creation in human flesh. There was but one spirit in Jesus. It wasn't God created a man and then filled him with the Holy Spirit like the prophets of old. That is not who Jesus is. Jesus yes, is God alone in flesh. No other spirit life force was in that flesh. And we know that cannot be that there ever was, because if that were true, then God has punished one of his creatures for the sin of another, which he has said he will never do because it would be immoral. God has said the father will not suffer for the sins of the son. The son will not be punished for the sins of the father. Each is punished according to their works. God cannot 
punish one creature for the sin of other creatures. This is why it's critical for us to understand who Jesus is. Jesus is God who suffered on the cross in our place because he cannot do it otherwise. This is what separates Christianity from all the religions of the world that not only was somebody sacrificed, but God himself was on that cross. God, and only God, was on that cross. God, who took on human attributes when he entered human flesh, was on that cross. There could not have been a human spirit created by God, separate from God, in that flesh. If that were so, that spirit created by God has suffered the agony on the cross that we deserve. And God has punished one of his creatures for the sin of others. And that is impossible. A Nephilim. Okay, so look, this is what I wanted to point out. God These people murders. just got through telling us they believe Jesus was a created being. Wait, wait, wait can I finish what I was going to say? Okay, so... God teaches, in his, teaches us in his word that Jesus, Jesus <laughs> is both that's the, the danger son of, God. of using the word person. It's why these heretics demand that you use the word person to describe the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And then if you won't, they'll declare you. They'll swear you. If you don't swallow their fake philosophy.